hello in this tutorial i'll be showing you how you can easily edit or retouch skin in photoshop as a beginner from the very start to the very end and if i told you i've always had issues regarding understanding how to do your skin retouching better this is the best tutorial for you simply like the video and don't forget to subscribe this channel because it helps the channel grow in the long run and if i told you want to download this very image for along simply check the links in the description of this very video so that you can download the image to follow along with this kind of tutorial so in order to open the image into photoshop you're simply going to come and locate the image right click and come to open with and simply come to photoshop and the image is going to be opened into photoshop so what you have to understand about frequency separation it divides this very image into two layers so it is basically going to be the same image but the image is going to be divided into two layers so just come the background layer and the very first thing you have to do is creating those two layers so you can press ctrl j twice or you can use command j twice to create those two layers so command j or you can use ctrl j twice to create those two layers then you're going to double click on the layer rename that to color and you're going to name this to texture so these two layers are basically the colors and the textures and after dividing the image into the colors and textures, so select the color layer and hide the texture layer. So the color layer is also containing some textures or details. So what, do, what we have to do is simply blurring away the textures from the color layer so it can only remain with the colors. So we are going to come to filter, come to blur, and come to Gaussian blur right there. Take the radius all the way down and click on an area on the screen. Make sure that the preview option is turned on or checked. So click on an area that has more skin details or the area that has more skin textures in the image. And after doing that, you can see that area in this Gaussian blur window. So left click on the radius slider and start dragging it up. So you left click, drag up and release to see the effect in real time. So left click and drag up, just like that. You have to stop at the point whereby the textures are just starting to disappear from the image. You can see that the textures have just started to disappear at this point. So what you have to understand in this case is the closer the image, the closer the image, the higher radius you have to use for your Gaussian blur, and the far away the image is the lesser Gaussian blur radius you have to use because when an image or when a photo is at a distance it means you can't see more details than a close-up meaning the far away the image is the lower the radius you have to use because you are involving less textures and the closer the image is the higher radius you have to use for your Gaussian blur but you have to drag the way you have we have done this because you don't have to cram so we have to move the radius and, and stop at the point whereby the textures have just started to disappear from the image. So for this case, we are using a radius of 7. That is when the textures have just started to disappear from this very image. You are just going to click OK. Select the texture layer and now activate it. And after act activating the texture layer, we are simply going to come where you see image and come to apply image. So when you come to apply image, it is going to open up the apply image dialog box right here. So make sure where you see layer, you select the color layer. Make sure the channel is set to RGB. Make sure the blending is subtract because we are editing an 8-bit image. You have 8 right here. Opacity is 100%. The scale is 2. Offset 128. So you can simply manually type in these values. Preserve transparency is not checked and the mask is not checked. Make sure the invert option is also not checked. So if at all you are editing a 16-bit image, these are the settings you have to use. Select the color layer, channel RGB. The blending this time around has to change to add. The scale is 2 and offset 0 and simply turn on the invert option. And you'll see the textures on this gray layer. So our image is 8-bit as you can see right here. So I'm just going to change this to 8-bit settings as I have explained before. Click OK. Change the blend mode from normal and change it all the way down to linear light. So after you have done this, meaning you have successfully separated 
the image into the colors and the textures. So we're going to select both layers by pressing Ctrl or you can use Command and selecting both layers and drag them into a group. So left click and hold down and drag them into the folder, put them in a group. So you can rename the group by double clicking on the name to frequency separation. So after doing this, when you come and return out of the original image, you can see there is no difference between the original image and what we have created. Meaning you have successfully divided the image into the colors and the textures. So we're going to come to the color layer in this case and select it because we want first of all work on the colors in the image and later on work on the textures. So select the color layer and turn off the texture layer and as soon as you do that you can see that the image tends to look a little bit blurry because we are dealing with colors. So just come under the brushes, right click and get the mixer brush tool. And if at all you can't locate the mixer brush tool under the brushes, you can locate it below here. So select the mixer brush tool, just come to the settings, make sure the hardness is set to zero. Soft round brush is selected, make sure clean brush is selected and make sure the second option that is clean the brush after each stroke is selected because we want Photoshop to automatically clean the brush as we are trying to blend different areas of the skin. We are going to be using a weight of 9%, load of 75%, mix at 90, flat 100%. Make sure sample all layers is not turned on. So after doing that, we are simply going to start applying the mixer brush tool and brushing and blending the skin tones to create evenness within the skin. So you can increase or reduce on the size of the mixer brush tool by using the box bracket keys on the keyboard or the square bracket keys on the keyboard. The left one is going to reduce on the size and the right square bracket is going to increase on the size of the brush. And as you're brushing on the skin, always make sure that you don't zoom all the way in like this. Because when you, when you do this, you can't see the uneven skin tone transition. So make sure you are retouching at a distance. So what we are going to do, we're just going to start blending the transitions on the skin. So how to blend, you left click and hold down and you blend or brush colors that are looking alike in a given area to create a harmonious transition between those colors. So we're going to do the same for this area. So you left click and hold down and blend a given area just like that. So after blending a given area, you, rele you release the left click button and you reduce on the size to work on a smaller area. Remember we are using the bracket keys on the keyboard. So left click and paint. And by the way, if at all the brush is displaying a plus icon, deactivate or press the caps lock key on, on the keyboard. So we are just going to be doing this for the rest of the image. And where these colors are transitioning from one color to another, you can use a small brush and blend that area to create a nice transition between those colors. So that is what we're going to be doing. So don't mind if at all the image is looking a little bit plastic because right now we are dealing with colors in the image. But when we come and return on the textures, you can see the textures in the image are still left intact. So just come and turn this off and select the color layer. And by the way, as you're brushing, make sure sample alias is not turned on because we don't want the brush to sample colors from other layers on want to work with the color. So make sure sample all layers is not turned on. So we're going to brush and by the follow the skin flow or how the skin is flowing on the image. So you can see a cheekbone is moving in this direction. So I'll brush following that direction. Just like that. So take your time while doing all this because you don't want to change or distort the original shape of your model's face or your subject's face in this case. So we are going to be painting just like that. And you can see I keep on reducing or increasing on the size of the brush tool depending on how big or how small the area is. So I'm just going to reduce on the size just like that and paint just like that. Reduce on the size. And when it comes to the nose, you see I'm following the up and down direction of the nose to keep and maintain the original shape of the model's nose. So you can see what we are doing. So just come and paint just like that. 
And as you're seeing, we are trying to blend the colors on the skin so that we can create a smooth kind of transition. And that kind of smooth transition is what is going to contribute more to a smooth kind of skin while we are still retaining the original skin textures or details on the skin. So come to the next area. Remember, skin retouching should be done on each and every area that has or contains skin. So I'll come to the next area and also try to blend all this and come the hand. You can see hand is moving in this direction. And by the as I'm doing all this, I'm not zooming all the way in. I'm retouching at a distance because this helps me to identify the uneven skin tone transitions and even it helps me retouch or edit the photo faster or quickly. So you can see I'll just come and blend each and every area in those particular places. So you can even use a small brush and slightly brush on the lips just like that to kind of smoothen the lips. So you can see what we have. So just come and turn on the texture layer and just see the before. I'll just click on and off on the group to see the before and after, before, after, before, after. You can see what we have been able to achieve. So right now that we have worked on the skin using the Mr. Brush tool, there are those areas that we may have accidentally missed out as we are trying to use the Mr. Brush tool. And to have more perfect results, for example, in the face area, you are simply going to come and select the lasso tool and make sure new selection mode is activated and make sure the feather is around 20 pixels. The reason for this is because we want the edges of the selection that we are about to do to be as smooth as possible. So select the lasso tool and just come and make a selection just like that. Keep eye from the edges or the eyebrows or the edges of the image. So just come to filter and come to blur. And when you come to blur, come to Gaussian blur. So when you come to Gaussian blur, you, it is going to bring up the original radius that we use for our frequency separation. And when that radius is brought up, simply left click and drag this up until when you feel like you're seeing better results. So for our case, we had a radius of seven. So this is the hack you can use. Multiply the radius used for your first step of frequency separation by three. So for our case, we had seven. So seven by three is 21. So I'll just delete seven and type in 21 and it will give me perfect results. So I'll just come and click OK. I'll just come to this other side of the face, draw or follow the way that area is. Come to filter, blur and come to Gaussian blur. And it's going to apply Gaussian blur on that area. So if I told the effect is too much on that area, Right click on that selection and come to fade Gaussian blur and you can reduce the effect to your liking. So I'll just leave mine to 100% for purposes of education. So I'm just going to come this other side and also apply my Gaussian blur filter and come to blur and come to Gaussian blur just like that. And you can see this tends to perfect the image even more in the areas that we may have missed out when we are trying to use our mixer brush tool to blend the tones in the image. So when it comes to the nose, you can only apply it on these dark areas of the nose and you have to follow the shape. Don't apply it on the overall nose because it is going to make the nose look a little bit flat. So I'll just apply it on those areas, filter, blur and come to Gaussian blur and I'll hit OK. So you can see the before after before after so after retouching the skin we we now have to remove the pimples or blemishes on the skin so we have to select the layer that is containing the details or the texture so just come and select the texture layer and we just have to zoom in to the image by using ctrl plus on the keyboard because we want to see the textures even better or the pimples come and get the clone stamp tool and make sure the hardness set to zero the mode is set to normal, opacity at 100%, flat 100%, align the selected and make sure the sample is set to current layer. So to remove a pimple, we have to copy and stamp over that pimple with clean skin. So how this works, we hold down the option key on the keyboard. So we locate the pimple that we want to remove, hold down the option key on the keyboard, hold down the alternate key for totally using Windows, 
option and left click on a clean area near the pimple or the blemish and simply release the option key on the keyboard and left click over the pimple or the blemish to replace that pimple with clean skin. So that is what we are going to be doing for the rest of these whiteheads and blemishes and always take your time as you're trying to clean up or clear these imperfections on the skin. So I'm just going to be doing this for the rest of some of the white heads on the skin so that we can have a better looking skin. Remember skin retouching can't be perfect if at all you still have the pimples or blemishes. So we just have to clear out or remove all these blemishes. So you keep on sampling and painting over the pimple or the blemishes that you want at remove from the image. So to remove this line, hold down and left click and drag until that line is replaced with clean skin. So this is what we understand by skin retouching and if at all you are benefiting to this point simply like the video and don't forget to subscribe if at all you are still watching and enjoying this kind of educational kind of tutorial command minus to zoom out so after removing the blemishes you can see the overall before after before after before and after right now we are done doing the skin retouching on this very image and we have retained the original skin details in the image so if at all you want to proceed you can as well do a little bit of eye whitening by coming to the adjustments and creating a hue and saturation adjustment layer come to master and simply take out the saturation of the image around negative 76 then press ctrl i or you can use command i on the keyboard to invert the effect come to the brushes right click and get the brush tool and make sure the hardness of the brush you have selected is set to soft round brush and the mode is set to normal or past at 100% flat 100% make sure you have black and white on these two color swatches you can reset them to black and white if at all you have any other color by left clicking on the tiny swatches to black and white with white as the foreground color you can use the arrow key to put white as the foreground color you can zoom into the image and paint in the white area of the eye. Remember, we are only painting on what is meant to be white in the white area of our subject's eyes, just like that. And you can see right now we have whitened the eyes. So if I told you make a mistake, you can as well switch the brush back to black and black is going to erase or hide the mistake that you may have done. So you can say before and after. And if at all the effect is too much for your liking, just come the opacity of that layer and reduce it to your liking so that it can look natural. So we're going to come to the adjustments and create a selective color adjustment layer. Come and target the blacks and simply come to the science and just take up the sun slider to remove the red color from the black area in the hair. So right now we are done doing the skin retouching. And finally, to save a sharp image after editing, simply come to File export and come to export as and it's going to open up the export as dialog box so under format make sure you select jpeg quality set to the maximum which is seven for my case that is the highest quality that i have make sure the resample is set to by cubic sharper and make sure the color space is set to convert srgb and also embed color profile are checked and simply click on export in order to save the image so just hit save and your image is going to be saved in that location so this is how you can easily or simply understand frequent separation from the start to the very end and if at all you have enjoyed this video don't forget to like this video and don't forget to subscribe if at all you have been watching and you are not a subscriber to this channel ronix from ronix photography thank you for watching i'll see you need more videos on this channel don't forget to keep practicing keep practicing Keep practicing to be perfect and better and keep creating.